Piece one, two, D prime, two, one, five here once again. So for the G1 Climax 29A block, uh, we had one of my dream matches. So there were two dream matches in the G1 Climax 29, both of which were uh, equal dreams, so to speak. One was John Moxley versus Tetsuya Naito, and number two was uh, Kenta versus Kazusuke Okada. Um, I will admit I was wrong in my prediction. I thought Kenta was going to take this one home. However, Okada took this one home. And um, I'm not at all mad with that. Uh, this match was absolutely stellar. Um, nothing at all wrong with this match, in my opinion. Perfect in my eyes. So let's get into it, right? So we got Kenta. A recurring theme uh, of Kenta in general, but it's great to see this come back because after being Hideo Itami in WWE for so long, I don't think he's been able to do this nearly as much. Uh, but we have Kenta doing his, like, his well-timed disrespect, right? So throughout the match, there were two parts that really stood out to me in regards to that. Uh, there was one part where Okada does his signature, like his, uh, his uh, fake slap, like he, he fakes it out, where he puts the person up on the ropes. He, um, as the referee goes in to force a clean break, Okada then screams and he acts like he's gonna smack the guy in the face but instead he just pats him on the chest and backs off, right? He does that. Kenta then puts Okada in the same position. He acts like he's backing off, right? As he's doing that, he smacks Okada across the face. I'm like, this is why I like Kenta. And then there's another part where Kenta manages to knock Okada down and he does Okada's signature Rainmaker pose. I'm telling you, man, this dude has charisma. Dude's nice with it. I like the disrespect because it's like it's well timed and makes sense, right? Aside from that, some of the spots that stood out to me, I liked um, Kenta. He went for the game over, which is like a um, the Alma Plata uh, crossface, pretty much Daniel Bryan's um, yes lock, so to speak. So he goes for that initially, and Okada instead rolls out and hits him with the flapjack, which is a bit. Interesting because most uh, most of the time when Okada hits the flapjack, it's on an opponent who's running. He doesn't just hit it on someone who's simply standing. So I thought that was interesting. Uh, there was another spot in the match where Okada, he had, this was on the outside. Okada had Kenta set up to do his signature uh, like rope hung DDT or in this particular instance would be a guardrail assisted DDT or guardrail hung DDT, whatever you want to call the technical name of the move. You know what I'm talking about. So he goes for that. Kenta's like, nah, fam, we ain't doing that today. He reverses it. He throws uh, Okada onto the guardrail for doing a gourd buster, right? Kicks him a few times for good measure, makes sure his son ain't gonna move. Gets up on the apron, runs off on the apron. Double foot stomp to the back of Okada's neck. Referee counts to 18. Okada rolls back in the ring. Kenta's like, nah, fam, it ain't over yet. Springboard drop kick. Boom. Uh, Okada goes in the corner. Kenta runs at him. Yaka's a kick. Boom. Okada goes down. Kenta hesitation drop kick. I'm like, yo, listen. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on, man. Kenta's coming back. So, you know, he got to let y'all know, like, what time it is. Because a lot of people don't know of Kenta prior to, you know, Hideo Itami, so he's letting y'all know, like, yo, I'm out here, so props for that. Um, other sequences in the match that stood out to me, I like when uh, Okada, he countered uh, Kenta's diving double foot stomp and hit him with the, the shotgun drop kick, sending Kenta to the corner, and the interesting part was that Okada followed up with a hesitation drop kick of his own. Uh, I don't know if Okada ever did that move before, I don't remember him doing that move ever, so it was interesting seeing Okada do that because Okada's like 6'3". So to see a big, like I'm used to seeing someone like like Finn Balor or uh, like Kenta, someone like who's like not six feet tall or over six feet tall doing a hesitation drop kick. I'm looking at Okada like, man, that's a, that's a big dude <laughs> doing a hesitation drop kick. So um, that was cool. I like that sequence. I also liked... Um, when they were going back and forth with their finishers. So there was one part where um, Okada, he had Kenta up. He was about to hit him with the, um, the tombstone pile driver. Kenta, however, reversed it. He, and he gets into the position where he's going to hit um, Okada with the tombstone. Instead of that, he puts Okada up on his shoulders. 
He goes to go to sleep. Okada grabs his leg, throws him around, and drop kicks Kenta in the back of the head. That was nice. He picks Kenta up, does the tombstone. He goes for a um, a uh, Rainmaker, as per usual, because that's typically the setup for the Rainmaker. And Kenta, I believe this time, he counters with a, um, what was it? The, uh, the discus clothesline. That was nice. I like that particular sequence. There was another part where Okada was going for a diving um, elbow drop, one of his signature moves. It looked like he was going to hit the move, but Kenta positioned himself in such a way where he caught Okada's arm and put him directly into the game over. That was one of the smoothest counters because it looked like he was going to hit the move, but uh, Kenta was like, nah, Okada, I got you. I got your number. Put him in the game over. Uh, fortunately, Okada, fortunately for Okada, he makes it to the ropes, uh, causes a rope break, and um, also just to like finish the match off. I think that's pretty much the majority of the spots in the match. Forgive me if I'm missing anything. So many great things happened in this match. But the ending sequence I thought was great for two reasons. One, it looked like Kenta was really about to hit the, um, the go to sleep. It didn't go that way. And um, Okada, he jumps back. He kind of like falls back, lifts Kenta up, does the spinning tombstone. That's like the definitive end. I haven't seen anyone ever reverse anything from the spinning tombstone. When he hits that, it's over. He hits um, Kenta with the Rainmaker shortly thereafter. One, two, three. Now, here's why I like the, the ending sequence. And just the match in general. Um, I know uh, Okada... In a lot of his matches, there's somewhat of a tendency to hit the Rainmaker multiple times. Not that I necessarily think there's anything wrong with that, but I think it's special when the Rainmaker is only hit one time in a match and it ends it. It's like a definitive finisher, not like he has to hit it three, four, five, six times. He just hits it once, ends the match. I thought it was great. And um, also, one other thing about that, uh, just about the match in general, I like... Um, Kenta, he hit the Busaiku knee kick twice. One time, the typical Busaiku knee kick on um, Okada as he's standing. But there was another variation where he hit the move where Okada was kneeling. I'm like, that looks great. I, I don't know if Kenta ever did that move before, but certainly the first time I ever saw that move done in such that way on a, an opponent who was kneeling. It reminded me almost of the, uh, the Bumaye or Kinshasa, as we may now know that move from Shinsuke Nakamura and kind of like a shining wizard. It was a nice a nice little uh, variation on his signature move. So yeah, that's it, man. All in all, those are like my favorite spots in the match. I thought it was a great, great show of respect at the end. I like the handshake. So I hope this isn't the last time we see Okada versus Kenta. If it was the first and the only time we'll see the match, then look, man, they really delivered. So I thought it was great. I'm, I'm happy with the outcome. I wanted Kenta to win, but I'm not mad that Okada got this one. So what did you guys think of the match? Do you think it was great? Do you think it was overrated? Do you think they could have did, did something better? Let me know what you think in the comments. As always, thank you for watching. And um, I will be seeing you guys again very soon. Subscribe at DPrime215. Until next time, peace.